On this video, we're going to explore this 14-inch Toshiba TV. Now, this can be this applies to all TVs, but this is a 14-inch CRT TV. As you can see, we have a problem here. Look at the lines in the picture, and we've got some lines at the top of the picture. The picture's all it's got retrace lines in the picture here, and we've got the picture short at the bottom. We're going into a vertical failure on this set. So we're going to use a scope where we're going to look at the vertical circuit and see where our distortion is coming from. So if we look at pin number two of the vertical output IC, we're seeing some distortions here. This should be a flat signal, but it's not. And, and, and this is a fault that I've created on this set. So that's what a normal signal looks like there. Okay, if we look at the picture, oh, my screen's a little too high. That's why we're getting some retrace lines here. Let's just, I guess I bumped the screen control here. Let's just take that back a bit. There we go, okay. So there's a normal, there's a normal picture, and here's our fault. And you can see there's, you see the difference in the scope there, what I'm doing. This is a fault that I planted. I've just replaced, I've replaced a bad capacitor. I've replaced a capacitor with a bad one. Uh, one that is quite common on here, and I'm just, I'm just bridging a new one in on the bottom of the circuit so you can see what happens here. But this is this is a failed. This is called a bootstrap capacitor failure. And you can see if we look at the scope, that's pin number two. If we move over and look at pin number three, this is our sync pulse. I don't think it's going to make much difference on on the pulse itself. No, well it does. Uh, if we look at our if we look at our pulse when it's in failure. Now if I if I if I connect the capacitor, you see the difference it's making there. So there's there's our sync pulse, our normal sync pulse. To generate our sawtooth. If I move over to pin number four of the vertical output IC, uh, that might be ground, that one. Let's see, look at the next pin over, five, nothing there, six, again. You can see the difference here when it's bad versus when it's good. Now there's my output there, that's pin two. So there's the distortion. And this should be a nice flat waveform. So that's pin two. I'll show you what I've done here. I've just I've put my temporary fix in because what I did is I I intentionally changed one of the capacitors. In this case, it's a C305. I intentionally put a bad cap in. It's a two point uh, two point two microfarad capacitor. These ones are little red capacitors on these uh, Toshibas. So I intentionally put one in that the ESR was bad on, just so I could demonstrate this so that you guys can see what the symptom is. But this is a very common problem on these uh, sets. And it's okay to bridge another one in. If you're testing this, you don't actually have to remove the bad cap. When you have a bad capacitor in the vertical, it's okay to tack another one on and just bridge it on. As long as you get your polarity correct, and as you can see, what it makes a connection. My signal co comes back to normal, my sawtooth signal, and uh, the picture returns to normal. But when it's bad, we've got this extra, this extra slope here. And we're just scoping uh, pin number two of the vertical output IC. Very common problem on these sets.